And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, new game here, The Game of Thrones, The Iron Throne, The Struggle of the Great Houses of Westeros. This is based on the Game of Thrones HBO TV series, and this is an interesting game, but what really interests me is if you focus all the way up here and you're looking at the designers, we'll see that we have Bill Eberly and Peter Laka, and I'm like, well, who are those guys? Guys, those are two of the designers of Cosmic Encounter, which, as if you've watched my top 100 games of all time, you realize is the greatest game of all time. So that has me interested in this game, but I'm sure a lot of other people are interested in this game because it is essentially Game of Thrones, which is one of the most popular TV shows that's out there at any given point. Uh, this has a lot of the different characters that you will like from this show. And, as kind of a heads up as we go into this review, realize that I have seen a lot of the episodes of this show, but I do not know how to pronounce all these people's names exactly properly, so I'm probably going to mess it up, in which case I apologize to those actual characters, but not you because it's not your name. But anyhow, let's take a look at this game. It's a game of negotiation and back and forth, trying to spread your influence to other houses, up to five players. Here's how it plays. Each player is going to pick one of the houses that they want to be. There are five different characters for each of the houses. So you have the Tyrells, you have the Targaryens, and there's different characters that come with each of them. Cal Drogo, yeah! Um, the Baratheons, and so there's a card for each of these characters, and you're going to basically shuffle these cards, and you're going to draw two of them, and then you're going to pick one of these two people to be your leader. So, let's say, for example, I shuffled, and I get Eddard Stark and Arya Stark to be them, and so I say, I'm going to make Eddard Stark be my leader. All right, so he's going to be my leader. There are five discs for each of the, the houses, so I'm going to take his disc out because he's my leader. And then the other four people, so I have Bran, Rob, Caitlin, and Arya, they're going to be uh, leaders that I'm going to be using, but he is the main leader. He's the person who's in charge of everything. So depending on how many number of players there are, this is the full complement here of five players. You're going to put out different spots. You're going to have here one of these boards that signifies your house, and on this house you have influence, and the goal of this game is to get the influence off of your house and onto other people's house. The first person to do that is the winner, although to, if two people do it simultaneously, those people will win together. So there could be uh, even possibly a four-way win in a five-player game with four people winning and one person losing. Each person is going to get a deck that corresponds to their house. In this deck, there's going to be some truce cards. There's going to be numbered cards. They're called hostility cards that go from one all the way up to 20. Not every single number is represented in your deck, but you have these different hostility cards in there. You'll also have different cards that match the different people. So here's a card for Caitlin Stark. There's one for Arya. Um, yeah, here's one for Bran. And so you have a couple cards for each person. So you're going to shuffle these cards and have a handful of five of them. One person's chosen to go first, and on a player's turn, they're going to draw the top card of this stack here. And this is going to tell you who you attack. So let's say I'm the Baratheons, and I'm going to attack Stark. So the first thing I, you do when this happens, each player involved in this conflict gets to draw a card from their personal deck. This is one way to get uh, cards from your deck into your hand. Each player also can take a power. Now there's crowns in this game. These crowns are going to show the power that these leaders have, and they can send it out to different people. And so I can take one power and add it to one of the people out there. If I'm attacking the Starks, Eddard here is also going to put it out on one of the people. Then you choose who you want to attack with. So let's say the Baratheons decided they're going to attack with Stannis. So they're going to turn him so that his arrow is pointing forward to show he's attacking. And then um, the Stark side, they're going to defend with Rob. So they'll turn him so his shield is defending. So we then will count the number of power on each of them. So four on him, and Rob has four power on him. So right now it's four to four. Each other player, then, who's not involved can declare their involvement. Maybe the Lannisters say, hey, we're going to help the Baratheons. We're going to send... Uh, um, oh, sorry, I have the Lannisters in the wrong spot. Well, the Targaryens here say they're going to help, and they're going to send 
um, Daenerys in. And so she's going to add four power to help the attacker. Now, the Baratheons can say, yes, thank you, we'll take your support, or they could refuse it. If they refuse it, go home. You don't get another, you can't say, oh, I'll help the defender then. You can't do that. But they say, okay, we'll take it. So now it's eight to four. The Lannisters say, we're going to help the defenders, and we'll send uh, Jaime Lannister here. And so they point their thing here. The defender says, gladly, I'll take that. So now it's eight to eight. And uh, Terrell say, you know what, we're going to sit this one out. And they can do that. And so once all the players have done that, then each, the attacker and the defender, are each going to play a card from their hand face down. So let's say the Baratheons, if they both play numbers, so let's say the Baratheons play a 10, so that's 10 plus their 18, and the Lannisters play a 6, so that's 6 plus their 8, so it's 14. So the Baratheons are going to win. If the Lannisters' n number had been higher, then they would have won. Now each side has the opportunity to play truce cards. If you play a truce card and the other person plays a hostility card, you automatically lose. If you both play truce cards, then you have time to make a deal, which could usually say, hey, I'll give you, you know, I'll put an influence on you if you put an influence on me. And that's a good way to get influence from one person to the other. If the attackers win in any scenario, then anyone who's the attacker, so in this case, it was the Baratheons and the Targaryens were helping them, so both of them would take one of their influence and put it on this person's board, on, on the uh, Stark's board. If the defenders win, then each defender um, is going to get two cards from their deck, plus they can take two power off their leader and put it on one of their people. Uh, also, each person uh, who loses, loses half the power on them, which goes back to their main leader. If you lose all your power, and it's rounded up, if you lose all your power, then your character dies. Now, the winner can take a hostage from the other person. If you play a truce card and the other person plays an attack card, you get a hostage, and there are special abilities that get hostages for you. A hostage means you can take the top card from their deck, you can draw a card randomly from their hand, or if they already have a hostage in front of them, you can take it. Now, hostages may be, you might get a very specific character as a hostage, and you can give that hostage back to the person. You can trade hostages, you can do different things with hostages, or you can torture the hostage, and if you do that, they lose four power, which could kill them. Uh, sometimes you'll get one of these cards, which has nothing to do with anybody, and in that case, you can just do one damage to, uh, to one of the characters that's out there. But you also can just keep the hostage, and you're keeping that card out of their deck so that they can't use it. Now, we mentioned these cards here for the different characters. If you use these in an encounter, it counts as a zero. So you're probably not going to do that. But if this character is involved in the encounter, so let's say Elena is, in what is the character who's in the encounter, then you can play this as after resolution phase, remove two power from each non terrell character on both sides. That's spite. She's a mean old woman. Uh, and if she is your leader, then... You, and let's say, well, she is the leader. You can see she's over there as the leader. Then you can play this no matter which character is involved in the battle. But uh, I can't play his card unless he's the specific card that's in the battle. So if I'm using Mace, I can't play his card, which adds five to my side's power for each supporting player on the opposing side. So that's kind of interesting. And so there's different cards that can be played. And you don't get to draw new cards unless there's an action that lets you do so. So if you are involved in the battle, of course, you're going to get one card. If you... Uh, when as a defender, you will also get two extra cards. So that's ways to get cards. Or a few free hostages that you've captured are ways to get cards. And that's it. You're just going to go around the board. You're going to be drawing from this. It will tell you who to go after. Uh, usually it's going to be a house, but sometimes it might that's the person who has the most influence other than you. Um, or uh, here's one. The person who has the most power and their leader is the person you have to attack. Either way, you're just going to keep going around the table till one or more players wins. <laughs> Now, some people are probably not going to like the fact that they're using screen captures, right? They're using pictures from the show. Although, I, I will say, for the, the most part, I thought these were pretty good pictures, really. They, they look good. They look in character. I, don't, they don't, I thought they were good for the game. The components for the game are pretty good, except these. Now, these little power tokens are crowns, and so they're already dangerous to step on. But, okay, don't step on your pieces. But the problem with these is... As, as you can see here, as I'm stacking that, that's definitely two, right? And this is three. And as we add more and more, four, five, it's not so easy to tell at a glance how many are there. I mean, it's really difficult. And every game of this that I have played, people are constantly saying, how much power does that person have? And in low light, it's almost impossible to tell. But, so that was kind of a pain in the neck. Um, to the point where when I'm saying, all right, just spread them out. Don't, don't stack them at all. 
just spread them out in your character so we can see how much power everybody has. Because in this game, the power that people have is important. You're sitting there saying, how much power do you have? How much power do you have? The game is all about the negotiation, right? Many of these games are going to end in ties. And I'm normally opposed to ties, but I don't mind the ties here because you can, you know, it's a tie that you are specifically uh, angling towards. And if you don't want to be part of a tie, you don't have to be. You can try to win alone, but it's easier to win as a tie. You can say, hey, let's both play uh, truce cards. And then your opponent plays a truce card. And you play a, 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 an attack card. Ha, ha, ha. And, of course, they're not going to trust you again, but there's nothing really binding in this game. Um, then there's the hostages. Now, I found the hostages to be an okay part of the game. The hostages are there. They're interesting, but you usually don't hang on to hostages very long. Yes, you can keep that card out of that person's hand, and, but returning it, getting a card is good. Torturing it, taking the four powers off, good. But if you let it sit there, uh, there's a good chance there's different character powers that can steal hostages from you. So... That's not quite as, as handy as I'd like it to be. I like the concept of it, and I like that you get them in theory, but it just sometimes it's weird that my hostage is a seven power card. Um, uh, but other than that, the game is all about the negotiation. Sometimes you don't want people necessarily to help you in attacking. You say, why wouldn't you? Well, they might have four of their influence out, and I only have two of mine out. And if they help me and we win, then they will win the game and I won't. So, of course, I'm not going to ask them to help me attack. Or maybe uh, just in revenge because they, uh, they, they didn't invite me in last turn, so they're not getting invited this turn. But what I like about this game is there's no such thing as permanent alliances, which is pretty similar to the TV show, actually. And just because I helped you last turn doesn't mean this turn I'm coming after you. And the game doesn't really cause any deep, lasting grudges because this is constantly happening throughout the game. I help you this turn, I'm slapping you next turn. And so that's a pretty cool thing. So I like the game. Now, you notice that I have not mentioned Cosmic Encounter to this point, but I have to. Cosmic Encounter is my favorite game, and so people say to me, where does this compare with Cosmic Encounter? Well... After my first playing, I wasn't quite sure, but now that I've played it more, I can pretty much tell you straight up, it doesn't compare. Cosmic Encounter is amazing. It is my favorite game of all time. This one is good, but not even in the top 100. And I'll tell you there's a couple reasons for that. One, I like Cosmic Encounter's just whatever theme it wants. It's its own theme. It's its cosmic universe. Cosmic Encounter also has a huge amount of uh, variety in it. And even if you... Okay, so... To be fair, there's a lot of expansions in the game. But Cosmic Encounter, it just feels like every game's going to be different. Here, there's some, there's some interesting things that you have your power of your character, and it, that you technically, when you take a house, you have one of five different powers. Okay, so there's technically, in this game, there's 25 different powers included in the game. That's fine, and I like that. But Cosmic feels cooler, and Cosmic has flares, and Cosmic has reinforcement cards, which are exciting. When an encounter is over, you're never quite sure that it's over, and it just seems like it has a whole lot more depth. And I also like the way that uh, allies are done in Cosmic better, where allies basically, you invite them to help you. Here, they kind of invite themselves, and then you say yes or no. And uh, while I think this game is fine with five, just like Cosmic, I think this would be better with six, but I'm, maybe they'll make an expansion at a six player. So, I don't mean to put this game down, but it's going to be compared to Cosmic Encounter, and Cosmic Encounter just blows it away on every level. However, if you like Game of Thrones, and you have never heard of Cosmic Encounter, this is a pretty neat game. You're really going to have a lot going on in this game. You'll like it going back and forth. This game ends at a very reasonable time. Uh, all, the, all the games I've been involved with have been an hour, just a little over an hour, maybe 90 minutes at the most. It has a pretty strong theme to it. If you like the TV show, everyone I played with is talking about the different things. It is a little odd sometimes when you send out the little Baratheon girl to fight for you. Um, some of the characters are like, why are you sending a handmaid out to this? But it's not so much fighting, it's influence, it's intrigue. And I want to see the little Mormont girl show up in this. And, you know, there's a lot of characters like, ooh, I'd love to see some more of these characters. Um, and I would imagine that, you know, maybe eventually there will be other factions and stuff for the game. But let's say there's nothing else. It's still a fine game. If someone's a fan of the TV show, this is definitely a game I think you'll enjoy. It brings out the feel of that backstabbiness of Game of Thrones, and I think you'll have a good time. So for me, sure, doesn't compare to Cosmic Encounter, my favorite game. And there's a lot of overlap between the two of them that I don't know that I would ever pick this over Cosmic Encounter unless I had some people over who love Game of Thrones, and I'd be like, well, here's the perfect game for you. And so it's kind of unfair for the game that it has that older brother, which is just so much better in every way. It's like, oh, why don't you be more like Cosmic Encounter? Um, but 
it's still a solid game on its own right. And I think because of its theming, a lot of people are going to enjoy it there. So that's Game of Thrones, The Iron Throne. Who wants to sit on this piece of garbage? Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.